Hey, what is up everyone? Welcome back to another review and today I'm taking a look at the Master Grade Mobile Gin. And of course, as usual, if you do want one of your own, I got mine through Hobby Link Japan. And there's a link down there in the description. So anyway, starting the review as always with absolutely everything that comes inside of the box here. So we've got the mobile gin itself, a huge big old sheet of sticker style decals, one sticker for using with this which is for on the mono eye, two missile pods, the rifle, the sword, some extra magazines, and the exact same hands we would have seen with the Zaku Warrior. Last up then, we've got a base adapter. So anyway, getting right on into the aesthetics and there is the mobile gin out of the box snapped together with a little bit of extra effort. So as for the extra effort, that is just some panel lining in black. I did try three different panel liners on this kit because I'm kind of trying to get to grips with which one I like the best. So just to give you a bit of a rundown. So the first type I used was this one right here which is the pore type panel liner. This basically automatically fills in gaps for you but it is not water soluble. Basically it just auto fills everything with a really deep black that is a little bit shiny under the light but it is a very satisfying black ink. So these kind of pens can leave these little dots where you touch the plastic that you may forget to clean up like I did right here but besides that they are easy to use but you will need some kind of solvent to remove any errors so yeah what can I say I like it next up I used one of these brush type panel liners which came in this here Gundam marker set that is this one right here so this has a kind of brush tip which you can see through this little tip window right here actually it's more of a big old fat marker tip than a brush tip but it works kind of like one here's an example of where I use this it does look a little bit messier as you can see and this wipes off somewhat easily it kind of gives a bit of a gritty grind Grimy, oily kind of finish and is a little duller than the other kind of panel liner. And the last kind I used right here is the fine liner type of this right here which I usually use on kits and this I used on smaller little segments like here. So this doesn't have as much black to it as the first panel liner I showed. It's quick, easy, non-messy and easy to clean up with no mess. Probably the simplest fastest kind. But I digress back to the Master Grade Mobile Gin itself. I get so excited when a brand new Master Grade comes out. They're still my favorite grade because they've got a decent size and they're not too overly complex. So they're very collectible while still packing in the detail. So I will mention after building a lot of different kinds of Master Grades over the last few months, this is the latest new one and I do feel it feels, well, a little different. The best way to put it is it's very like the Master Grade Zaku Warrior as you would expect. So this does share three runners with that particular model kit, that is the Zaft frame. These are the leftover parts that are on it, so as you can see it does use a lot of said frame so it does have the same hands which means we will be able to pass back and forth handheld equipment. So as to the plastic in this kit, I guess kind of like what we would have seen with the Zaku Warrior, it's a little bit on the kind of glossy brittle side, seeming a little bit more cheap to the touch. It still looks absolutely fantastic but it is all one style of glossy, which you may or may not like. Honestly though, I think it looks fantastic. The color separation is awesome and it is a simple, nice build. I can remember before I gave out a little bit about the Master Grade Jester, saying that it felt a little too simple compared to other Master Grades coming out at the time and that thing has held up better in every single one of them, so... So sometimes simplicity is best and that's what this feels like. It does everything it has to do and nothing more. So anyway, now moving on to that full 360 degree spin so you can see absolutely every angle for yourself and I'll throw the image of what this looks like from the original art from the show on the right hand side so you can compare and contrast yourself. So the first thing that I'd say right here is it's not as stylized as that art right there. It's more of a standard proportion kit than that. However, I would argue that it looks a little bit more like what you would see in scenes from the anime than the actual art does. I do feel that Bandai has made some good decisions here like making that crest up on top of the head and little bit smaller. It really does round out all the proportions nicely and make it look a little bit more like a serious mecha. This kit has tons of surface detail which means it has a lot of panel lining opportunities and once again the color separation is killer. Also, grey and orange, that is such an awesome color combination. Even though it is somewhat of a simple build, this is one absolutely beautiful looking mobile suit right here. I will mention that the only sticker we have in here is for that mono eye inside of that clear piece in the head. So now moving on to the size comparisons, there it is side by side with the Granddaddy Gundam, so it's about average mobile suit height. There it is side by side with the Jester, which I mentioned earlier on. There it is side by side with some Seed Zakus. And finally there it is side by side with the Master Grade Ale Strike Remaster. Anyway, 
away there is the Shelf Presence test, so you can see this with a whole bunch of other Gunpla, from High Grade to Master Grade to Reborn 100 to Perfect Grade. And as you can see, because of its dull color, and the fact that there isn't really a whole lot going on with it, it may get a little bit lost in a massive collection. But if you like your Gunpla on the subtle side, this might be what you're looking for. But anyway, jumping right on into the accessories, and here is everything we saw at the beginning of the review, so let's get right into it. So first up, as for the hands on this kit, these are the exact same finger swapping type we would have seen with the Zakus. So that does mean in order to swap them out, you just pop them off like so, simple as, then grab the alternate ones that you want and just pop them in where you took the other ones off. So as these hands are off the exact same runner we got with this particular kit, logic defines that, well, we should be able to swap the weapons, so let's try and get that Zaku's machine gun. Keep popping that up, pop off the fingers, and then just chuck that on there like so, and yeah, you can just directly swap the hands like so. However, in case I do forget it, which I probably will, the backpack connector is completely different. Square hole on the back here, but those two slots for the Zaku and its equipment, whereas the Jin, if I pop this off, you'll see that it's actually a two-point connector, kind of like what we would have seen with the high-grade Infinite Justice. However, not all hope is lost if you were thinking of making some kind of kit bash with the backpacks or the equipment, because you could literally just, I'll just swap it out because it's a more matching color, pop off the arms like that like that and pop off the torso. Hey, I'm gonna try and pop off the head too. I'm not sure if this will work, but something tells me it might. The pegs for the arms, waist, and neck are... I'm sorry there, Ginny. It's a little bit on the back heavy side, but yeah, all those pegs are the same, so pop, 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 oh, pop, and let the attempted kit bash begin. So, so far, so good. Also working out. Yep. Now, this is the part I was wondering about. Oh, man. Butterfingers. But yeah, this was the part I was wondering about. Can this fit, and will it work? It sure does. And that's pretty badass. And speaking of badass, the Jin looks awesome with that big Zaku collar. That is so, so cool. And anyway, now the Jin is prepped for using with all of that Zaku equipment that comes with the Blaze Zaku, the Gunner Zaku, the other Zaku. So first up, we've got the Gunner Zaku's equipment. Ooh, we got a loose wire here. Get on in. That hole. And stick in that in. The grays go together pretty okay. There we go. I won't attach it now, but I will flip it all out just for the look. Look at that. Swinging it forward. Forward. Get it under the arm, and yeah, that is pretty cool right there. I love it. When Bandai makes parts somewhat compatible. All right, all right. Seeing as I've tried the Gunner backpack, might as well try the Slash Zaku's one. Okay, so popping this on while the swole Zaku warrior in the back there watches on. And there we go, that pops on super simple and that looks really cool. That is pretty awesome. So yeah, kit bashable just like the Gundams were way back when. So yeah, anyway, back to the hands. And what we've got in here with the swappable fingers are holding hands, trigger finger, widespread dynamic, and fists. For both hands, a pair of each. So now moving on to the weapons and the first of them in here is this, which is a legit plain old sword, which I love. We we see beam sabers an awful lot, so it is nice to see an actual physical cutting weapon. So jumping to the manual to read out the blurb about this, this is the MAM3 Heavy Blade. The blade has been applied with molecular processing technology, and it is powerful enough to slice through non-PS armor. PS is phase shift. When it comes to the actual blade, we've got a metallic silver blade, the guard and hilt is in the same color as the armor on the mobile suit, and the pommel then is in that bright burning red. We are missing some color separation on the recessed segment that should be in red, but not the biggest deal. Next up then in here, we've got the rifle. This is two-tone in color, which is really cool. So that is the same color as the armor of the Jin up top and black down bottom, which of course is the same color as the inner frame. We've got a removable magazine up top. Attaching all of the weapons involves just popping off the fingers like so, selecting the ones that you need, popping them on, and then attaching just like that. And there we go. There's a quick example of what both the machine gun and the sword look like attached. Next up then here we've got a pair of these three barrel missile launchers. So the missiles in there are in orange, the launcher itself is black, we've got an attachment point right there in the back, and a handle on the absolute rear. That handle on the rear that you can pull out like so for use 
in the hands. Last up then we've got this rack of magazines. So that is placement points for all three of those magazines. We've got a grand total of four of course including the one we saw in the machine gun and around back we've got another one of those attachment points up top. So every single one of these weapons from both of these missile pods to that magazine rack to the machine gun to the sword all of these have the exact same attachment points and those are for attaching right in here on these hard points on the mecha. So we've got these hard points on the calves those are for attaching on the missile pods like so. These do rotate so they allow whatever is attached in to move. We have the exact same hard points on the side skirting armors. The one on its left hip is for attaching the sword. This one also rotates ever so slightly not all the way around. We've got another one right here on the right hip so you can just pop the magazine rack in there like so. Also rotates ever so slightly. Then finally round here in the butt flap we've got this little bit of a connection point that's a little different to the other hard points. This one flips out like so and that one you can attach the machine gun into like that. So I don't know about you guys but I love it when a mobile suit can mount all of its equipment on board when the hands are free. It just seems like such well a smart design. So everything is on there, hands are free and that is epic. So the last thing we have in here is a base adapter and before I talk about that I realized I did forget to mention these right here which are the included sticker style decals. Now I don't usually use these too much because I don't find them that good. I used a couple of them just for the sake of example but you see that little bit of a line around it there where you can kind of see where the sticker is. It's that that I don't like that and the fact that they don't really sit on curved surfaces very well. Actually just to make an example out of this here is the Zaku Warrior with similar stickers. As you can see that one up there on the shoulder really is not holding up well at all. It's starting to peel but if I grab the P Bandai version which is the slash Zaku Phantom. What I've actually used on this one is water slides because that's what comes with the premium Bandai kit and these hold up so much better. Even though that logo is not sitting on a curved surface you can see it even goes across the recessed line almost perfectly and you can't really see the outlines on them. The ones on the black you can definitely see them. If I used a bit of mark setter on there it would have been a little better. Like personally I don't know what the cost difference between a sheet of stickers like this versus a sheet of water slide decals are but I would happily take a set of water slides one well sixth or one eighth of the size of this any day over a sheet of stickers that will never really look that good but that is just a personal opinion but either way from a distance if you do use these stickers you won't really notice the outlines too badly it's just you know you'll notice them a little bit. But anyway, back to that base adapter. So anyway, the base adapter with the mobile gin just slots onto the crotch like this, kind of clips on. Feels solid so far. Grabbing an action base, throwing the gin up there to test out its adapter. Is it any good? Give it the old wiggle test and yeah, that actually seems like a very decent base adapter. Actually, the only thing given up is the action base. So anyway, now moving on to the build and the articulation and as for the build on this kit, it is quite a simplistic master grade to a degree compared to the master grade line in general but that does mean it is rock solid, like really solid. Just like we would have seen with the Zaku right here, these kits are quite robust because of their simplish build. The only issue you may find is it can be a little bit back heavy because of the backpack but if you line everything up right, you'll have no issues. So the neck in this kit right here is a ball joint and a hinge. There is the head looking all the way up. There it is then all the way down. If you pop off the top of the head because it's coming off anyway. And in here we've got that little tab up top which you can use to turn that mono eye side to side just like that right there. Pretty awesome. Next up there is the head side to side and honestly I thought that this would all get blocked up a lot but it doesn't really. It's pretty good. So this second section of shoulder arm right here can slide forward and back on a little bit of a rail. In here we also have this joint which allows the shoulder to come out like so. When it is all the way out then we can get some up and down out of that. So let's check out what we can get when the arm is attached. So to the front, to the back, a little bit of up and down but with everything there's the arm all the way down to all the way up. Full rotation then gets blocked a little bit by the wing but it can go all the way around. The shoulder armor does move separately to the arm. The little armor flap in there can move up and down. As usual in here we do have full rotation at that upper arm. A double jointed bend at the elbow and 
then the wrist joint is a mix between a ball joint and a hinge, so you can get a lot out of that. The cockpit hatch is just a simple flap, that is all. One 100 scale pilot figure inside, minimal forward and back ab crunch, somewhat of a side to side, limited side to side rotation, ball jointed front skirting armor, another ball joint on the side skirting, a lot of forward and back, not so much up and down, somewhat of a premium butt flap. We have a forward and back moving mechanism in the hips, there's all the way back, that can then move all the way forward, and each leg is independent. As for the kicks then, there's the kick all the way up to the front, not bad at all, there's the kick out to the back, pretty good, and as for the splits, I can already feel those side skirts getting in the way, it could pull them off if it wasn't for the side skirting armor, but with them on, it cannot. Next up we've got a double jointed knee bend, that is very nice, there's nothing covering any of the joint inside of that, which is a little bit of a letdown, I really do miss that sliding armor here that usually covered that up way back when with master grades. A bit of a moving thruster right here, moving armor flap right here, and now getting the foot on the ground to test out that forward and back motion. There's all the way to the front, very nice, there's all the way to the back, very very nice, and finally the side, whoa, to side pivot right there is absolutely perfect. Do we have a toe bend? We do have a toe bend, up, not down. Alright, so taking off that backpack to check out what we've got inside, we've got these little segments here that can move up and down like so to angle the backpack on the back. There is a push-pull mechanism right here. The upper wing section can open up like so. The lower section can open like that. And of course, we've got that up and down, back and forward. So a lot of nice movement on there. Nice and dynamic to get the big open thruster boost kind of look. So yeah, the articulation on the mobile gin here is really, really good. Actually, I'd say it's almost perfect. The only thing that is a little bit lacking is the torso. That's not unusual with a Gumpla. But again, sometimes a tight, stiff torso that doesn't move too much means that it won't flop backwards when it's got a set of wings like this does. So on the whole, I am blown away and it is a rock solid kit to boot. Very, very nice. So anyway, that right there is it for the review and just like with the Master Grade Zaku Warrior, the Master Grade Mobile Jin is a gold tier kit. So this is a simplistic master grade. If you're into ones with a lot of finicky detail, a lot of opening hatches and parts, this may not be the one for you. But if you like solid master grades that once they're built, aren't gonna fall apart and hold pretty much every pose you put it in and have awesome articulation and pretty much perfect color separation, then you will love this. If you're a fan of Gundam Seed, Honestly, you have to have it. Episode 1 this thing dropped in and it is the perfect companion to any Master Grade strike. I am so glad we got this kit in Master Grade. Honestly, I'm kind of confused as to what Bandai's doing, but I'm glad they're doing it. I know Seed is super, super huge in Japan. We get a lot of kits from Seed all the time, which makes me very happy. But as for why these bad guy grunts are getting the Master Grade treatment, I have no idea. But I am so, so happy that they are. I highly recommend it. If you don't have one, I recommend going out to get you, well, one, two, three, maybe more. Anyway, as always, thank you so, so much for watching. Make sure to come back for more Gunpla reviews, and I'll see you next time.